It's pretty crazy, actually. Right? Yeah, because your work is like, oh, we need dinner. Of course we're going to work. Right. But now you got people like, oh, I'm not going to work. It's crazy. I got dinner covered. It's crazy. <laughs> Bruce Lawn. Before we get into that, guys, my name is Bruce Lawn, and this channel exists to encourage you to master mind your business the master's way. May not be subscribed yet, so if you aren't, please hit that subscribe button as we are on the verge of cracking 10 thousand subscribers and i would love to celebrate that with you all right now let's get into the video the cognitive dissonance around christians pursuing starting a business pursuing financial literacy is at an all-time high in my opinion i think a lot of this is outside of bad theology in the church is also bad ideology that drives people into believing certain things are intrinsically bad certain concepts are intrinsically bad that aren't capitalism being one of them. How often do you hear people criticize capitalism, be angry at capitalism without ever understanding what capitalism is? Well, that's the point of today's video. We are getting into a video by Economics Explained called Why Every Country Ends Up Capitalist. Okay, so one of the biggest issues in addressing the strengths, weaknesses, and subsequent inevitability of capitalism is that unfortunately there is no universally agreed upon definition of capitalism. A big reason for that is simply the tribalism that revolves around economic systems like this, where one side will attribute everything good to capitalism, and the other side will only attribute bad stuff, and in the end, whether intentional or not, it all just gets a bit too messy to put a hard and fast definition on it. That you ever watch this channel? No. It's, it's actually pretty fire. He does yeah. like deep dives on economics, and he talks about uh, just all things economics related to different countries. And so it's interesting that he's pointing out that people either blame capitalism for everything, or they make capitalism always good. And this yeah. is actually a really good video. I said this to some of my friends on the left, this this topic, because I had a friend do that. Rufat actually did that. I, we talked like, about oh, capitalism. Like, oh, blame capitalism. Oh, people aren't <laughs> having babies because of capitalism. No. But he does, um, I will tie this in to a very interesting point about a country that's in a lot of turmoil and how they're doing this kind of hybrid of capitalism. So keep going. By taking a step back and understanding what capitalism is supposed to achieve, we can get a more well-rounded idea of what it is than honestly most professional economists have. Capitalism, socialism, communism, and even anarchy are all systems to try and answer the fundamentally unanswerable problem of economics. We live in a finite world, but as humans we have unlimited desires. So decisions have to be made about what gets produced with those limited resources, how it gets made, and who it gets made for. Capitalism tries to deal with this problem by creating incentives for people to make more stuff more efficiently by rewarding those who make the largest contributions with the largest share of resources. Now of course this doesn't always work as well in practice as it sounds in theory, but we'll get to that soon. For now, capitalism is just an economic tool to address the central economic problem, the same way that a socket wrench is a tool to address the problem of a securely fastened nut. Now, the characteristics of the tool of capitalism are where different economists, politicians, and even regular people have different ideas, but there are some core features that almost everybody agrees on, but also some that might be surprising. For starters, free markets, free trade, and even things like money are by no means unique to capitalism. These all existed well before capitalism did, and are still components of other economic systems like socialism, because they're so effective at answering some of the central economic questions. Instead mm -hmm. of a government or some other entity deciding who gets what based on arbitrary rules, a free market allows people to decide for themselves what they want by spending their money on things that they value the most. This will in turn tell producers what to produce more of and what to produce less of, so that the economy more effectively allocates its limited resources towards what people actually want. The main feature that distinguishes the particular economic system of capitalism is that free markets exist for the private ownership of capital, hence the name capitalism. Capital by its economic definition is stuff that helps an economy make more stuff. So tools, mm -hmm. factories, infrastructure, and technology. The development and improvement of capital is what has allowed the world to become as wealthy as it has over the past 250 years since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Things like okay. so capitalism isn't unique in the sense that currency exists or trade exists. Capitalism yeah. is unique in that once the Industrial Revolution happened, technology started being advanced, then the people who own the means of the innovation and the technology end up becoming prosperous because they're creating things that create more things as opposed to what would the inverse be so if monarchies if, people right? and the money just goes up to the back to the government the money goes Whatever. back to the government or the king or queen now people can have the technology to figure out how to develop a chat gpt the mm. chat gpt gets coded and then on the back end of chat gpt code a bunch of other programs so like if you ever see those like ai programs now you ever see like those like chat with tupac right <laughs> yes those Talk, are all chat with jesus just chat with Jesus. Those yeah. are all anchored on the back of Chat GPT. So Chat yeah. GPT, so somebody creates the capital of Chat GPT, then that capital gets 
use to create other capital, to create other capital, to create other services. It's similar to having the ability to buy cameras, to buy video switchers, to buy technology, to stream, to then generate revenue, to then create value, right? Like it's it's the same thing. Yep. You couldn't do this back in the day. So that's why like th this concept is important because it's about the innovation in the technological advances and who gets to own that is who gets to own more, make more money. Steam engines, railways, modern production lines and instant communication enable the production and creation of wealth at a level that has never been seen before in right. the history of humanity. Now, the idea of capitalism is that since these tools and technologies can be privately owned, there is an incentive for an economic participant to make improvements on existing capital or invent That's something right. totally new and then use that to reap the rewards of the additional wealth they helped create. For those the people, people who own the capital benefit and are incentivized because they're told to use that capital to create more output and more jobs. Mm -hmm. That is what capitalism is. Right. So it's not a zero sum game. It's not a limited amount of resources with technological advances. People can create more opportunities. They don't already have enough resources to tinker on and improve capital. They can seek investors who have excess resources that have not been put to any better use, who can decide if their idea is good enough to invest their resources in, normally for a share of the ownership of the improved capital. Now, in most cases, the resources that investors are putting into new ideas just take the form of money, which is a highly liquid way for resources to be accounted for and transacted in any economy, not necessarily just a capitalist economy. It's worth noting, however, that investment into new capital development doesn't need to just be in the form of money. OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, received billions of dollars in investment from Microsoft, but most mm -hmm. of that took the form of Microsoft letting them use their servers to run their AI programs on. In this case, Microsoft, the investor, had additional resources, spare service space, that could be given to a company with a way to improve capital, artificial intelligence technology, and if this technology is used to increase wealth generation, Microsoft will be rewarded for giving those resources with a return on their investment. This system of investment and incentivized innovation makes capitalism not only incredibly efficient at answering the question of what should be produced, but also how it should be produced. Mm -hmm. Now, this is different from the economic systems that came before it, where capital was mostly just owned by the ruling class, and there was little incentive for people to make improvements on tools and technology, because they wouldn't be the ones to reap the rewards for it, and it was difficult to attract investment in the first place, because again, mm -hmm. unless a potential investor was a member of the ruling class, they would struggle to get a return on their investment before it was just claimed by some lord whose land it was developed on. That's why pretty, pretty, pretty stark mm. contrast, right? You see the contrast between yep. capitalism and other systems? It's it's very, 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 very different if the king and the lords own all Yeah, they 360 the, means. the people that live on the land, essentially. Right. It's right. like, oh man. Right. It's like, hey, you developed this on my land, so yeah. it's mine. It's mine. Yep. <laughs> it's like, whoa. Yep. So, right. so far, hopefully we're all in agreement that this is a huge net positive yeah. to society. Now, we're going to he's going to get into some of the negative parts and I'm going to give you guys an example of a country that actually exhibits this. Actually multiple countries, but one of the countries is, is actually thriving on every single metric <laughs> um despite them in, incorporating these adjustments. Go ahead. So the protection of the ownership that people claim over capital, both physical and intellectual, is another big feature of capitalism. If people are rewarded for improving how much an economy can produce, or at least giving the resources to the people that can improve how much an economy can produce, well then naturally an economy will produce more, which means even average people that aren't investors or innovators will have more wealth and access to more resources than if these incentives didn't exist. Now this is exactly what has happened. Just last month we explored the economy of ancient Rome and found that since the empire didn't have much in the way of capital, like machinery, technology and even infrastructure, the economy didn't produce goods and services on nearly the scale we do today, and most people at the time dedicated most most of their effort to just making enough food to eat. People in most Could you imagine your life's existence is just creating enough food to eat and survive? Honorable. That's all of civilization up until the last hundred years. It's pretty crazy, actually. Right? Yeah, because your work is like, oh, we need dinner. Of course we're going to work. Right. But now you got people who are like, oh, I'm not going to work. It's crazy. I got dinner covered. It's crazy. <laughs> Right? I don't think I don't think people get how incredible of a time we live in. Yeah, that's crazy. Go ahead. Around the world today, especially advanced economies, enjoy access to more goods and services than even kings from a few hundred years ago because right. there is so much more to go around. Now, of course, the benefits of this system have lifted everybody up. Economists call this the rising tide that lifts all boats. But mm -hmm. it has lifted some people up a lot further than others, which oh, is yeah. only the start of the system's serious the problems. The people who own the capital is who got lifted up way high. The mm -hmm. more investments you make in capital, the more you investments you make into tools that make tools that make tools, the more you're going to win. Capitalism as a system to encourage the development and utilization of capital has done a lot of good for the world, but it often goes too far into areas where the ends are not the intention of the means. Obviously, some of the most vocal critics of capitalism are people like Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin, who called the workers of the world who were left behind to seize the means of production. Now, when Marx and Lenin were writing about this, a better translation would have probably been to seize the factors of production. Because they were not just talking about taking back factories and machinery that was privately owned, they were talking about the other factors of production as well, land and labour. 
The private ownership of capital incentivizes owners to make that capital as efficient and effective as possible for adding value to the market economy. But something like owning land arguably has far more drawbacks and provides very little of the upside because it's very hard to improve a patch of dirt in the same way that someone could improve a piece of technology. Now, I think it's time to make the big disclaimer here that I am personally someone who owns land to live on and to rent out to other people. So even though it's in my personal best interest to maintain the use of land for economic returns, it does cause some problems. Land is a fundamentally limited factor because unlike a piece of equipment, it can't be created. Well, not really. Expensive land doesn't increase total economic output either, and in many cases, over the medium to long term, it can reduce it. If land mm. becomes safer and easier to invest in than capital, it will take money away from developments that will genuinely benefit the entire economy. If an investor could put $1 million into building new farm equipment, or $1 million into just owning a farm, then no matter what the price tag is on the farmland, it's not going to produce any more or any less food just because it's more expensive. If that money was that's spent that, instead- That's interesting, right? It's a better investment to put money into equipment that can help you farm than owning a farm. Yeah, because if you have a farm, but you don't have the equipment to actually generate the product to produce a revenue, it doesn't do anything for you. That's right. It's just a long-term appreciation asset. Buying the equipment, then with all other things being equal, it will increase output because something like a combine harvester or better irrigation systems can be used to make more food from existing land. Expensive land also puts pressure on people that would innovate in an economy to not take risks for fear of losing a place mm -hmm. to live. The argument in favour of capitalism over any other economic system is that it has proven to be highly effective at maximising total economic output. So even if it does create inequality, there is still more to go around in total. But if it encourages behaviour that could even reduce long-term output, well, then it's a system that could be improved. This is very close to the ideas of Georgism, a type of capitalism where people can still make money by investing in or creating stuff that makes stuff or just working really hard, but are heavily discouraged from making money by just owning land. This is normally done through very high taxes on the unimproved value of land, and in extreme hypothetical versions of a Georgian capitalist economy, the only tax would be this type of tax, further encouraging the development of enterprise to improve real economic output. So what he's saying is when people own too much land, the speculation that the land is just always going to appreciate in value reduces their need to innovate and create other means to add value mm. to the economy. It's just security. It's, it's like, just security. Oh, I'm just going to own this thing. And then there's less desire to, to innovate and to create more capital. And then you're taking that land away from somebody that would use that land to innovate. Right. So then Georgism is just taxing people that want to sit on land mm -hmm. more than people that want to invest in asset mechanics and infrastructure. This probably deserves a video all of its own, and it's unlikely that a land value tax, however steep, would be able to replace all of the other taxes in an economy. Even still, it's a great demonstration of the genuine flaws of capitalism and creative ways that they can be patched. Beyond just the economic idea that this gets more resources dedicated to making even more resources rather than the wealth of a nation being tied up in its literal dirt, there is a pretty compelling moral argument that the land of a country should belong to the people of that country, and if an individual or a business wants the exclusive rights to use that land, they should compensate everybody else for it. So capitalism is great at improving productive output by creating a free market for capital, and at least in its current form, that has had the consequence of also turning land into a speculative asset. But perhaps the biggest critique of capitalism is what it does to the third factor of production, labour. Now, in modern advanced economies, people cannot directly buy labor. That practice is, well, frowned upon these days. But another feature of <laughs> capitalist economies slavery. <laughs> That's amazing. is that a free market for labor still exists with the job market, where workers can sell their hours and businesses can buy them. Capitalism also offers an incentive here for workers to improve the value of their labor in the same way that it incentivizes innovators, investors, and business owners to improve the quality of their capital. If a worker has a master's degree in engineering, they will probably be able to produce more economic value in an hour of work than someone working in a forklift, and that person with a forklift license will probably be able to move more stuff around a warehouse than someone using their bare hands. The formal and well-developed market for specialized jobs means that people have an incentive to acquire skills that will provide the most value to the economy, which in turn means more value is produced for everyone. People are also encouraged to provide labor that they are good at for the same reason. This system is not perfectly efficient by any means, but it is much more effective than some kind of central organization determining who does what. Before capitalism, people's roles by in society- By the way, that, that was life in Soviet Russia, Soviet Union, mm. Soviet Russia. They just kind of picked what, who did what. You're like, you are a My mom was a phone operator. And they just picked that for her. That's your job. Just, you just pick what you do. What about your passion? Do you right. communicate to Soviet Russia your, your passion? Typically, just be delegated to them by a ruling class. And since the vast majority of people were laborers and farmers anyway, there wasn't that much of a need to efficiently allocate skilled labor to where it would add the most value. So all in all, this modern system of a free market for labor sounds like a significant improvement. And it is. But again, it's not without its problems. In a capitalist system, the people that own land and capital, two out of the three factors of production, have an incentive to pay the third factor of production, labor, as little as possible, to retain more economic benefits for themselves. Mm. Thanks to the strong ownership rights and protections that modern capitalist economies have in place, it's very easy to acquire vast amounts of land and capital. Jeff Bezos doesn't need to raise his own army to defend all of the Amazon warehouses in the world, that's done for him. <laughs> and since land and capital can be used to make economic returns to acquire even more land and capital, it's very easy for these factors of production to become highly centralized in the hands of a few people. Labor, however, is fundamentally limited to how much work a single person can do, so it by its very nature is far more spread out across every economic participant in an economy. 
The problem this causes is that it's much easier to coordinate a small number of huge amounts of land and capital rather than a vast amount of individual pieces of labour. Workers are economically incentivized to fight against one another for good jobs, whereas businesses are economically incentivized to pay as little as possible. This is where calls for workers, the factor of production that are actual living, breathing people, to seize the other factors of production, land and capital, from those who would profit off them by claiming them, and since one of the cornerstones of capitalism is protection of land and capital ownership, such drastic actions would be a rejection of the capitalist system in its entirety. So now, that's what Marxism was, right? They were trying to seize the means of production because it will get consolidated mm. land and capital you seize those means you give it to the people and now every now everyone is has an equal state equity versus equality so everyone's right. working with the same towards the same goal for the same amount of money well everybody owns the means of capital everybody yeah. owns the technology they didn't factor in is then you get soviet union you get we're just going to tell you what you're going to do. There's no incentive to innovate and to continue building upon capital because mm -hmm. the government owns everything that, or, or the people own everything, right? That's a mess. People don't factor in when they're like indoctrinated into socialism and communism by their junior college professor. That like these are the ramifications of moving away from this. Now, capitalism is not a, a perfect system and I'm not saying Jesus was a capitalist or anything like that, right? But I will point out some specific parallels to capitalism and in the scriptures. And then I will point out one country that actually has this hybrid here in a second. In reality, capitalism is a very efficient tool that has undeniably done some amazing good for the world. The world that we all enjoy today, By even way, though it may Capitalism has pulled more people out of poverty than anywhere else, right? So if you're looking at what's happening right now in developing countries, it's because capital is being dispersed people are able to innovate and then it's a raising quality of life for everybody that's a net positive what are the governments like of third world countries well they need capital that's that's what so, they're like so, they're, they're, so they they're corrupt a lot of them are very corrupt because mm. there's so so many limited resources that when resources come in they steal them gotcha and so like that's why a lot of people come coming from the outside which is problematic as well but i don't want to brush up with the point that he made with regards to you know uh, the person of the factory uh, who has an engineering degree is going to be worth more economic output versus the person who has a forklift license versus the person driving the forklift versus the person who's just moving boxes with their bare hands yep right which again what is the deficit between you and someone that makes 10x what you make capital and skills yeah, that's the deficit. That's the gap. Always seem like it compared to millionaires and billionaires is still far better than toiling in fields. Rewarding the development of tools, technologies, and skills to build our modern economies has been a great success of capitalism, but that doesn't mean it's perfect or inevitable. Capitalism is an economic tool that provides and answers the central economic questions and makes them easier to address by having more resources to share around. Answering what to produce is a much nicer question to deal with when it's a decision between electric cars or petrol cars. It's not quite as nice when it's making the decision between producing enough food and producing enough medicine. Capitalism is not evil, nor is it some virtuous gift that has blessed mankind. Just like a hammer is not evil or good by itself. It's a tool that can be very useful if used right and right. do a lot of damage if it's used wrong. Capitalism, like any tool, can also be improved be and modified. <laughs> Already, every economy in the world today has laws and regulations to rein in markets from being That's truly right. free, and there is a the potential to keep the best parts of a system while addressing its serious shortcomings, which will hopefully lead to a better quality of life for all economic participants. So here are some parallels of capitalistic principles and Christianity, which is one of which is the ability to own a farm. Jesus says if you bought a farm, he's presupposing the ability to own land. Okay. He's yep. presupposing the ability to own a farm, which is a farm, is a type of capital. Yeah. There's a difference between just a plot of land in a desert and a farm that can produce stuff. Yep. Right? There's a difference between when he talks about, hey, a field, you buy a field. Suppose you buy a field and then you find treasure in it. So suppose you find treasure, then you go buy the field, then you get the treasure, right? It's a parable of his. So Jesus is presupp presupposing some of these concepts. We see in the New Testament, people always butcher this in Acts 4. They sold the things that they had, and then they dis dispersed evenly amongst them. People miss that they had things they sold. And then in Acts 5, when Ananias and Sapphira are caught and a lie to Peter and Paul, Peter goes, hey, you you sold this, and you presented it as if you, so you gave us all the money from the property you sold. But you could have kept some of it back for yourself. Yeah. Why did you lie to God? Right. So the issue wasn't that they kept some of the money for themselves. The issue is they lied and they tried to front as if that. So now you in, in Acts, you see private property rights. You see Jesus yeah. talking about private property rights. You see private property rights. You see people owning a, a form of capital, a farm. I would, I would say it's kind of a form of capital. Yeah. Right. So there's some parallels there. Now, here's the flip side is then if, you, if everybody can own land on a speculation that the value of land is going to go up, you get what we have now, which is a housing crisis. Mm -hmm. You don't have <laughs> enough land being yeah. developed fast enough. And so it's driving a lot of people into other places where they didn't grow up and that's becoming harder and harder and harder and harder and harder for people to live to get married start families do all the things we need to continue as a species the one nation 
that is thriving with birth rates, which maybe we'll talk about later, thriving with birth rates, thriving as a capitalistic economy, meaning businesses work well there, people are innovating, technology, innovation, right? I'm getting excited. It's not China. I hope not. It's not Asian. It's not, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not Canada. The one country that has this hybrid, Israel. I knew it was Israel. Israel you has some of the East. highest birth rates. Okay. Not just by religious people. Mm. Secular Jews have a lot of kids. Mm. Israel, you cannot own land. Really? Most of the land in Israel is is a 95-year lease. Year of Jubilee vibes. You cannot buy a piece of land in Israel and pass it to your grandkids and then pass it to their grandkids and then pass it to your grandkids. You can buy it to own a... For 95 years, you could pay, you could pay it off even, and there could be equity in that 95 years, but that land belongs to the state. And then it has to be resold after 95 years? It goes back into some sort of reselling, yeah, something like that. So you, the family can still get the money back from it, or no? I think you could profit from it, but you, but you mm. can't own it indefinitely. Yeah. Right? That's so crazy. now you can't just hold on to real estate as speculation. Hmm. Interesting, right? Super. And and they're thriving on all the other spaces? They're, they had the highest birth rates. Okay. Which is super important. How many kids are you having? Is what yeah. it has. And then, again, it's not just a religious Jews. They have a thriving innovation world, thriving tech, mm -hmm. thriving entrepreneurship. Economy? Uh, economy's crushing it. For, for a country their size, every metric. They're, they're killing it on almost every single metric. Ability to build wealth individually? I think so, yeah. Companies like Waze coming out of there. You have all kinds of stuff coming out of there. They're, they're creating Waze all. came out of Israel? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So it's interesting that when you consider it, that that's one of the... Now again, now again if people will say Israel socialist, whatever, but here are the, the factors, right, hmm. um, that work out for them. And so it's interesting when you get into, like, why is there so much housing issues in America right now? And Israel, it's expensive to live in Israel, too. Like, don't get it twisted. But yeah. overall, quality of life is also great, minus the whole, like, Hamas. You can get bombed. Hamas is sending rockets over, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Israel has a lot of tech, a lot of agriculture, a lot of land that wasn't good that they figured out how to farm and they figured out how to create, right, value mm. from it. And so it's an interesting hybrid. But, yeah, that whole uh, Georgian form of capitalism is, is fascinating, isn't it? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So the, 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 the punchline is capitalism is not bad. The downsides of capitalism is people who create capital will own on the land on the speculation that the land will go up in value, which is not good for most people because land, you can't recreate more land yep. and workers need protections Work, workers need rights workers need protection you can't you can't work people into the ground thank you so much for watching that video guys i believe that one of the best ways you can build a business is by first building a platform online so zach sparazzo puts together a free training for you on the number one metric you can be looking for to explode your youtube platform click the link in the pinned comment below so you can start that now all right i'll see you over there peace